Alrighty then, welcome back to Let's Play Saints Row 4. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to be back in. I'm um, going to go ahead and fart around with some of these text of Van Chars. That was weird. What's she playing? Yeah, so, started working on exporting the last stuff over to YouTube, Twitch was like, yo, we, we had to mute some of your shit because of copyright stuff, right? And they're like, okay, let me check this out, and it was just like, there's a huge ass portion, not huge ass, mostly a part where I was ranting. Um, have I been spelling Zinyak's name wrong? Is that an I? Jesus, fuck. Why didn't anyone tell me? No. App told me that I changed the name. I don't know. But we, we did it in my youth sometime earlier. I don't know when. Oh well, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest of them. Because I don't think I have before. I had conquered the money to attend the finest school. Oh, choir. Jesus, I can't read. The finest school in Zinland. But that was just the beginning. While I would love to say Zinkov Preparatory Academy embraced me with open arms, the truth of the matter is I was not the finest student. In order to gain admission, I had to endure rigorous physical and academic testing before they would grant me access to their legendary halls of learning. Continue. As is usual for admission to a school of such acclaim, the first of these tests was a scholastic aptitude exam, killing my own parents, trying out for a sport. Hmm, let's try a scholastic aptitude exam. As was my mother's wish, Zenkov Prep was an institution that prided itself on its scholastic offerings. To that end, it would only accepted it, it would only accepted candidates. It only oh god, why was I saying the word would? Fuck. God, it only accepted that sounds more logical and only accepted candidates that displayed academic prowess and further promise. So it was that I endured many weeks of standardized testing and training prior to my entrance examination. I am proud to say that I took to the studies well and managed to bring up my scores across the board. Still, there was one subject above all others that I had a particular di affinity for. As you may have already guessed, that subject was art history. Damn it. Though it pains me to admit such faults, art history was my weakest subject. The life of a museum curator, how I shall never know you. It's probably actually literature. Yeah. Oh, the written word. I... Ah, oh, the written word. I had, like most Zen, learned to read while in utero, but that was all very dry text such as manuals and design documents. It wasn't until this far more serious pursuit into academia that I came to love the classics. Continue. How surprised was I? that some of the finest literature in the universe came from a tiny watery planet more than 10 million light years away. While it would be, while, while it would be some time until I visited that seemingly unremarkable way station, I had fallen in love with its autistic offerings already. One author's work in particular captured my imagination. Can you guess the scribe responsible? Well, I, I guess spoilers from the ending, it would have to be Jane Austen. 
Dwayne, sweet, sweet Jane, how like my mother's dreams you are. Even now, all these years later, just the thought of Emma, Eleanor, and Elizabeth's exploits and romantic missteps brings a lump to my throat. Oh, the intoxicating back and forth between Miss Bennett and Mr. Darcy, how I could read those lines toward infinity. It was my celebrated essay on Jane Austen's body of work that caught the attention of the Zenkov Admissions Board, who not only allowed me entry into their fine institution, but secured my later position as head of the English Language Appreciators Society. Thus was my love of literature cemented in access to Zinkov Pre Preparatory Academy assured, which is where I met the teacher who would help me find my life's purpose, though that is another tale. Alright, let's go back in there and just hit wrong things. Um, killing my own parents. My word, what sort of pop barrack school did you attend? Trying out for a sport. While participation in competitive sports is encouraged and a good source of income for any institution of higher learning, testing for such a thing was not required. Mathematics, that's my shit. While I am no stranger to the Euclidean paradigm, mathematics was not the subject that drew me in. Euclid was a Greek mathematician that really jump-started a lot of this shit for us. Doc, yeah, damn it. Wait, wait, why did it back out all the way? Oh, uh, because I had an extra try again. Science. To be honest, while I enjoyed the laboratory experiments greatly, I found science as a whole to be a rather dull subject. If I wanted to read about the sateful children, time traveling charlatans, and overburdened bullfrogs, I'd. Well, I suppose Twain would be the one, but no. The good doctor's work is among the finest in literature, there is no doubting that. But I did not get lost amongst his colorful characters and impeccable rhyming structure as much as others. I shan't abide any author who dares suggest fugality and the demand for a proper work ethic or grounds for otherworldly intervention. I don't care if the worker's boy is on crutches. That man had a business to run. No. Absolutely not. So I think I said fugality wrong, whatever that word is. Okay, so I finished that. Okay, Zinkov prep. I clearly recall my first tentative stops into Zinkov Preparatory Academy. I was a land from the countryside coming into the big city, eyes wide and mind eager. I had never seen a building so large as so many finely dressed young people yearning for knowledge. It was the first time in my life I ever felt I was somewhere I truly belonged. I don't know how that accent went, it just kind of, kind of did its own thing there. But uh, it, it shows, shows the evolution of the character here. I'll move it. Yeah. What a Dwayne! Continue. Of course, not all the Zenlings there were courteous, studious-minded folk. Predictably, it wasn't long before I crossed the path of a brutish young man named Zenfax. We instantly loathed each other. It was obvious that the start, that from the start, that Zenfax took umbrage with my coat of many colors, lower class upbringing, prominent cranial crown. I feel like this one is the most applicable. Yeah, typical, no? I was now entering the proud and pre prejudiced field society I had read about so eagerly just a few months prior. While Zinfax was a 
bore and the constant thorn in my side I found solace in my studies. Lichard had engaged me early on, but the offerings of Zinkoth prep allowed me to expand into even higher-minded subjects such as intergalactic warfare and how to exploit diplomacy for personal gain. While a world of knowledge was while a world of knowledge there was to explore I think I still said that wrong. Can you? More than any other Zenkov faculty, Professor Zen Lo informed my later days. I remember clearly it was just two weeks into my first year when Zen Lo pulled me aside after class and said to me, Zenyak, you are natural born leader. Zenyak, these people are all your inferiors. Zenyak, never let anything or anyone stop you from pursuing your dreams. Let's say that one. Yeah! Has anyone ever told you that before? What a remarkable thing to say to a formative lad. And he was right. I, as the poor son of an ignorant butcher, had made it to the finest university on the planet. I wasn't just pursuing my dreams. I was living one. <coughs> Excuse me. Those words kept me strong through four years of the Manning study, kept my mind clear from physical distraction, dick, and ought to thank for my graduating with honors from Zinkov Preparatory, a first for anyone from the hamlet of Zenshire. Upon receiving my diploma, I knew exactly what I must do, kill Zenfax enter military service, kill Zenfax, and then enter military service. I feel like that's it. <laughs> Order of operation, don't you know? That's the thing about math. Yes, I admit, I let my personal dislike for that heinous bully overcome me and I snapped Zenfax's neck. Like old bark flaking off a dying oak. My time at Zenkar Preparatory, now at an end, I entered yet another phase of my life, one that would take me to a great many exotic locations and allow me to realize, finally, my true potential. Thus ends my years as a plucky child. Next we meet, I shall regale you with the tale of Zenyak, the young man. Alright, let's get back through. Coat of many colors. Are you... Are you quoting a song or something? I don't know. When I think Coat of Many Colors, I think, um... Lord English from... from Homestuck. Because, you know, his coat was very colorful. While I do consider it one of my finest features, my cranial crown was not the source of Zinfax's ire. Well, yes, that's evident, but those were not Zinlo's inspiring words. While Zinlo must have been well aware of that, as a professor seeking tenure, he was obligated to maintain a facade of impartiality, I'm sure. Rather short-sighted, don't you think? Not before I settle some unfinished business, certainly. Alrighty then. Oh. Hey, we don't. Yeah. Alright. At my time as Zingal Proprietary Academia. God. After my time as Zinkov, I'm go hold on. I'm googling what the fuck. How do you pronounce that word? Pre. Para. Tori.
Preparatory. Okay. Preparatory. Why can't I say that normally? Yeah. <laughs> After my time at Zenkar Preparatory Academy, I did what all young people in Zen must do. I entered the military. Prior to my days at Zenkar, <laughs> I admit I did not look forward to this rite of passage, but after, I relished the idea of honing myself into the specimen I would later become. Basic training was, as it is designed to be, a particular sort of hell. I don't know what the rules are where you come from, Rita, but military training for the Zen army consists of a grueling eight-week course that pushes recruits to their breaking point. I think it's about the same here. Some did not survive the training and were sent off to work in the mines or forced to join the Zen National Orchestra, famous across seven galaxies for how hideous their music is. In order to endure the training, I often relied upon thoughts of my childhood, a more innocent time in my life, my iron will, <laughs> and drive to do whatever I must to excel, a manufactured hatred of the enemy. I feel like it's his iron will because that thing is hard. Damn it. Relying is perhaps a bit strong. I certainly possessed an iron will, but relied on it? Eh? Yeah. A wise man once said, without a target, we are all just bullets in the wind. I wrote that in my journal last week, and it's true. Whenever you find yourself facing a seemingly insurmountable challenge, it helps to envision all the turncoats, opportunists, and megalomaniacs that are just waiting for you to fail so they can swoop down and pick the meat from your bones. With a furnace of pure hatred burning inside me, nothing would stop me from overtaking any challenge set before me. It was evident why am I yawning? In the latter days of my training that I was going to excel at field combat, commanding troops, conquering worlds. Well, this one's surely evident, but I feel like it's not the same. I'm going to click it anyway. Oh, okay. It was evident even then that I had conqueror's blood coursing through my veins. I took to every task with gusto. Never accepting anything but the best for myself and all those around me. I had vision, I had drive, I had everything needed to seize the universe by the nebulas and make it mine. After basic, I entered service and was sent to the front line of the great war that was brewing on planet Dard. There, I led the charge against the great Bedardian commander, Fran Scott. Using my innately keen insight, I surprised Fran Scott by murdering his soldiers and putting their heads on pikes, sneaking into his base under the cover of darkness, playing selections from the Zen National Orchestra at high volume. <laughs> While it may sound like a simple tactic, you should be aware that the average day on planet Dard lasts an excruciatingly long time. But I and my charge out of possession, a perfect moment to strike. We infiltrated Fred Scott's compound, trampled on his men under our mighty boots, and shattered the door to his bedchamber, wherein I pounced upon the foe and smothered him with my... Oh, sorry, I was, I was getting a little ahead of myself. Smothered him with his own pillow. <laughs> Sorry. Even now, looking back, I can't help but smile. From there, I led the charge after numerous enemies. <laughs> of the Zen Empire. Soon, the entire 
Guardian army fell before us and we had yet another notch on our already impressively called belts. Excuse me. I'm <laughs> sorry. Five. Rise to power. A magnificent victor in my belt, my military superior saw fit to bestow upon me a meritorious service in the glory of the almighty Zen, commendation, and my first of many promotions. <laughs> I'm tired. I'll take a moment because apparently my brain can't take reading. I drink some tea. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Ah, the third is a bit dry. Mm. Recognition breeds contempt, though, and I made many enemies throughout my military career, but perhaps none more scathing, more heartbreaking than Zen Vob, the Brutus to my Caesar. Caesar! Zen Vob served with me well against the Bedardian army, but his pride got the best of him when he questioned my authority in front of my in front of the troops, questioned my character, questioned my readiness to command. <sighs> God Okay, cool. Signing my unquenchable bloodlust, cold and calculating demeanor, lack of conscience, all the things that were held in such high regard during training, Zen Fob dared to suggest that I was unfit for high level command. I was brought before my superiors in a mock tribunal. Held simply to satiate Zinfob's whim, I assure you, where I was called upon to defend myself against these allegations. Complying with the tenets of the charade, I took my seat as defendant, as clear as the strained cries of a fallen foe, the charges were leveled against me, against each one I railed against my accuser, explained myself in a clear, concise manner, remained silent. Remain silent seems like something he might do. God damn it. <laughs> yes. Very droll. I stay quiet for no one. I guess there's no honor. I don't want I don't want him to be petty. Or petty. Petty. That's the word. Petty. I don't want him to be petty. So, I want this one. Yeah. Admittedly, I may have used some coerced language as... Emphasis to underline my points, but I conducted myself as one ought during any legal proceeding. <sighs> After carefully explaining myself to the council, they saw my point of view and dismissed Zimbab's case against me. Afterwards, I hunted my accuser down and killed him where he stood. That nastiness behind me. I not only continued to fulfill my role within the Zen army, but I excelled at it. After many more successful terrestrial campaigns against our foes, the officials saw fit to give me my own ship, promote me to Imperior, Imperior, <laughs> erect statues in my honor. I feel like that's a little excessive, like a little too fast. So let's go with the own ship. Yeah, indeed. No longer was I a simple passenger on our interplanetary death vessels. I now had my hand firm upon the rudder. 
metaphorically speaking, of course, into planetary death vessels are steered by complicated navigation systems. Of course, of course. Now, a celebrated member of the Zen army with a seasoned crew at my command, I blew up planet Zen and never looked back. Through a gala of my own honor, headed out toward adventure. Now, I think he did blow up his planet. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Damn it. Zen may not be the most cultured celestial of body, but it's still my home. Oh, I thought you destroyed it. Okay. Through a gall in my honor. Ah! Ah! Damn it. I do not have to throw gauls in my own honor. Thank you. Alright, fine. You want an adventure because you are a nerd. It was time to leave Terra Firma behind me and venture toward the stars. After forcibly convincing my crew to celebrate my newly appointed position with a soiree in my honor, not a gala, we left an anchor and spread our sails, again, metaphorically speaking, of course, of course, towards destinations just ripe for the picking. And that, dear reader, is where my tale gets most exciting. Ugh. Okay, I think I only messed it up a couple times. Um, he didn't do this one. Not even Zimfob was foolish enough to do that. Impossible, my character is unpeach unimpeachable. Everyone can see that. To be honest, I didn't give him much thought. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's see where this goes. One does not get promoted to Emperor. I appreciate your zeal, but let's not jump ahead. Okay, I got all these wrong. Alright, then. I'm Astra Prospero. Where the fuck that means? It's Latin. That's all I got. One moment. Oh, don't worry. Oh, no. Oh. Come on, YouTube. Due to a copyright claim, your YouTube video has been blocked. This means that your video can no longer be played on YouTube. Saints Row 4 re-elected part 25. We made it happen. Copyrighted content, the source, chaos, and confusion claimed by Ultra Music. <sighs> Thank you, Saints Row Credits, and the Academy for that matter. Thank you. I, I applaud everything. You grace me hard. Whatever, I'll deal with that later. Thank you, YouTube. Um, who even are you? I had to recommend a video on YouTube. I don't, don't know who the people are. It's it's warm in my room. Yeah, might need to get a little naked. It's, it's a bit heated. God damn it! Stupid India, you fat bitch. Get the fuck in. That no, was screw you, India. You're useless and tired of you. All right. Not actual India. It's um, strike teams in Mass Effect Andromeda. 
I don't have any quarrels with the country or state rather of India. Now back to the story. And uh, damn it, and Astro Pereira, like a siren calling ships to the rocks. <laughs> The velvety expanse of space has been a harsh mistress to many. To me, the unconquered reaches. God, what a challenge I not only accepted but yearned for. Not many poor souls, blindly unaware of how mediocre their existence were without a firm hand to guide them toward greatness. Oh, how I long to be that hand. It's only mildly sexual. I am not a soul easily satisfied. Wink wink. So I knew my dream destination must be a planet that could challenge not the collective might of the Zen army, but my own fragile ego, my political acumen, my tactical insight. I feel like it's not fragile ego, I feel like he would never attack himself and I'd Maybe that, but I want to go with tactical insight. Yeah, instinct. Not insight. The terrestrial victories I accumulated in my prior campaigns often failed to adequately test my keen tactical instinct. The maneuvers and strategies employed by so many of my foes were woefully pedestrian on their best days. I had news somewhere in this last year womb. A leader must exist who could properly challenge me. How fortunate I was that I only had to eradicate twelve civilizations before coming toe to toe with the talented and well trained forces of the Zet Young Theocracy. Despite what you may have heard about the people of the Jet Yong Quadrant, I assure you they were ahead of the rest in their martial prowess. Perhaps most impressively, the Jet Yong had mastered biomechanical fighting mechanics, the art of diplomacy, planetary shield technology. I feel like it might be this one. God damn it! Despite centuries of effort dedicated to that pursuit, all of their attempts at melding flesh and technology resulted in nothing greater than automated harvesting machines. Damn it. The Jet Young's theocracy, so called diplomats, could be bested by an amateur debate team. Okay, so she'll take, I guess. Okay. By harnessing the geothermal energy of Jen Yang's molten core, the theocracy were able to power a Dyson sphere like shield. Yeah. Mm. Uh, around their entire planet. Yeah, it sparkled in the sun like a coarse line of stars. Pirating in the sheerest glimmer of light, the way it scattered the wake of the neutronic lasers was simply breathtaking. Ugh. Upon our arrival on the planet's surface, the head of the theocracy and imposing fizzer named Bishop Quirkzug pleaded for not only his own life, but the lives of his people. Always a fair man, I agreed to meet him on a level field of battle. Mono a mono as true gentlemen. He didn't do that with the saints, you fucking bitch. I even let him select the contest. Much to my surprise, he chose a board game, a duel of swords, arm wrestling. Board game? Damn. As part of the theocratic doctrine, the Jen Young do not believe in flat surfaces. <laughs> What? 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 Okay. Uh. <laughs> I 
have mostly. Oh. And I thought I had left such uncultural diversions back on Zen. I learned then that this so-called sport had reached a far wider audience than I had hoped. Yes, Zerk is a qu God fuck. Yes, Quirk is a chose to challenge me at arm wrestling. How for a society so advanced in technology, thought I, could they be so taken with grasping hands and pushing? Little did I know that the cephalopodian anatomy of the jet yang combined with the curved surfaces that pass the tables allowed them great leverage at this sport. Oh ho, how clever Quirk Zug was, throwing me into a chap that played upon my own prejudices. Well done. Well done indeed. As it turn out, turns out, the winner of the match was. Of course, it's him. Oh. Oh. Yes, yes. Quirk Zug uses anatomical advantage to best me of that infantile test of strength. After shooting him through his enormous eye, I congratulated his corpse on a job well done. Giving the Zet young people no quarter, we made hasty work of their pathetic planet and to this day I keep Quirk Zug's desecrated tongue in my pocket. I rub it for luck. I wish I wish I saw that in the game. I, I wish I saw him just kind of like, kind of like a rubbing stone, how you just hold it in your hand and you just rub with your thumb a little bit. I wish there was a scene, at least that I caught, where he was just holding a fucking tongue and just rubbing it with his thumb gently. God, that's, the image is really creepy, but I want it. I'm going to have to Google that later, find some juicy fan art. Juicy. Though I wasn't aware of it prior, the Jet Yang homeworld was as was a rich source of gemstones and minerals in rare reserve on other planets. With resources in high demand at our disposal, I was able to fund many more conquests throughout the richness of space. A fascinating story that I will tell you soon. There we go, I'm going to... I want to translate that shit real quick, watch this. Okay, don't watch this, I don't, I don't have a camera, you can't, can't watch this. Okay. And Astra Per Aspera. It's not English. To the stars through difficulties from Latin. Thank you, Google, for not... I'm not... It's not English! Stop trying to translate it! From English. Ugh. I gotta check on November. Hey, they, they passed. Much harder fucking mission too. Cool, cool beans. The Great Zen expansion. Wait. I I I, for, I almost forgot. <laughs> Say that again and I'll kill you. As if anything could. Okay, I, clicked, I, I selected all those. Oh, how I wish. 
No. <laughs> Excuse me. Gosh. As you were indubitably already aware, the Grand Zhenyang victory was just the beginning of my stored career in the Zim Army. That's a lie. It wasn't the beginning. It was several chapters down the line, according to what you said previously. I still had numerous conquests awaiting me, including my first venture out toward a place the native scholars once called Via Lactea. Possessing astute foresight as I do, coupled with my all times all consuming need for control, I knew that before I set out to do anything more, I must find a second in command, acquire more ships, get some decent food on board. I feel like it's more ships. I feel like he doesn't need a second in command. He is was adept by himself. God damn it. Not to be immodest, but my fleet was already quite impressive, thank you. Okay, fine. Is it second in command, you fat fucking bitch, you piece of shit? Yep. Even I cannot be anywhere at once, liar. I knew in order to keep my crew appropriately subordinated while still being able to have some essential me time, that I had to have someone I could trust implicitly to oversee the orders I gave. Someone who could be my eyes and ears and also tend to my every whim without question. Ah, oh, said, said the very gay servant. He was a plucky little... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a plucky young soldier named Zenje who stood... He stood cranial crown and shoulders above the rest. I knew he would be... He would... Okay, I knew he would be make... Okay, so there is a typo. This isn't just me. I knew he would be make a fine lieutenant. But, as is customary to prove one's success is worth, I first administered a scholastic aptitude test. Ritual beating. A quiz to determine his understanding of basic etiquette. I think it's ritual beatings. Damn it. Those were already part of our daily routine. I saw no need to beat a dead horse. Do you see what I did there? I made a pun. It was a very good one, too. I, I... How's that a pun? Oh. Maybe it's a close to guess to test me today. Wait, no, he's very formal, so it's probably actually a test of etiquette, but I'm going to select this one anyway. Yeah. Oh, callback. Yes, quite humorous of you. Oh, yeah, big. Yes, it's going to test for you. I was not about to appoint someone as my military surrogate and manservant who was unable to appreciate propriety and tradition. I knew that if anyone were to even attempt to fill my proverbial boots, that they had to be able to do so in any conceivable situation. So it was I so it was I constructed a battery of examinations designed to test his etiquette across all manner of occasion. They really were brilliant, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I take a good breath in, I yawn, so I need to stop doing that. I am proud to state that Zinji passed every test in spectacular fashion, though we did almost have an incident when we were attacked prior to the dinner course of a fine meal when Zinji's brother died during examination of proper cross culture greetings. A rabid Zen pig got loose upon the ship during a rousing debate of intergalactic politicking. Politicking. Let's try that one. Damn it. Having endured my father's atrocious meat preparations as a lad, I forbade the use of Zen pig in any onboard recipes. It's, it's kosher. Let's have that one. 
damn it. As with custom in his native home of Zenberg, Zenjay faced his brother in a duel to the death at the age of three years old. Zenjay won. Oh, I should note that duels to the death are used in some cultures as greetings. A most curious tradition, that. <laughs> Hi! Stab, stab. In what was a regrettable lapse in judgment on the part of famed Boonian uh, furious, the Boon Hamada attacked us in mid space during the most important segment of Zinjay's testing. After destroying the Boon flea ship and flaying all the crew members, I beheaded Ariel the Furious with a bread knife and threw his remains into the onboard incinerator. Zinjay and I went on to enjoy a most lovely meal full of fresh Boon steaks and a delightful conversation. There's no A there, but I added it by accident. And he was definitely gay. His testing over, I formally named Zinjay as my lieutenant servant, and we continued our trek into deep space. Per my grand plan, I set about calling. I set about calling the universe of its weakest cultures, first starting with the Okanafaveta tribes of central Aspasia, the Gold Spray Alliance, the people of Earth. That was actually the last thing he did, so it's not a starting place, but let's go for an alliance because they sound like a bitch. Damn it. As even you find Zinch know, the great linguistic misunderstanding calmed the wide political chasm that separated the Gold Spray Alliance millennia ago. What do they teach in schools these days? Sorry. The Kajort Nefer. Nefer? Kajort Nefer tribes have been a blight on Central Alspazia since time immemorable. Really, I was doing everyone a favor by raising those heathens to the ground, but did the unified nations of Central Alspazia show me any gratitude at all? Of course not. Monster, they cried. Psychopath. Nothing short of planet-wide genocide was going to shut them up, which thankfully it did. From there, I continued on my path, conquering every planet that stood in my path, and despite the sense of unparalleled accomplishment I felt, something was lacking. I was not until, it was not until later that I would stumble upon my greatest achievement, my defining moment. I don't know why I'm yawning, but I had a tire. I'm 44. My defining moment. Oh wait, shit. I I failed on a couple more. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you honestly think I would have traveled all the way into the Jet Yang Quandary without bringing the finest chefs in the universe with me? Oh yeah, I did all this. Um, I did all of those two. Do you really count Earth as one of the weakest cultures in the universe? You really should think higher of yourself. Ow. Huh. Ugh. Yes, I held the keys to the universe in my grasp, yet something was missing. These victories, numerous though they were, felt hollow. I found myself wanting more, needing more. What could I possibly be missing? I had everything. Civilizations trembled when I announced my presence. My own army lived in fear of my wrath. What could I possibly be lacking? 
thin, like an evolutionary link crawling from the depths of a primordial soup. It hit me. I had taken so many lives. For what purpose? Conquering was not enough. I needed to test them, challenge them, to collect them. It was then I decided to build a museum dedicated to the greatest cultures in the universe, a petting zoo, the Simulation. I feel like it's that one. I could not trust those who fell before my might to roam around unsupervised in the real world, but a virtual one. That was another matter entirely. It came to me as a vision. A vast interconnected web of simulated worlds designed not only to contain the best and brightest in the universe, but to break their wills and make them subservient to me, Zinyak. Galactic Overlord and Head Emperor Supreme of the Zen Empire. Oh, did I forget to mention I killed my predecessor and claimed his throne for my own? My apologies for the oversight. I tasked Zin Zhe with overseeing the simulation's construction. We would hold the physical bodies of my fallen foes in a nutrient-rich suspension designed to accommodate even the most peculiar metabolisms. Meanwhile, their minds would be go their minds would be go on be there their minds would be go on in a world of my own creation based on each subject's fondest childhood memory deepest fear favorite food it's deepest fear yes everybody aside from your humble narrator is afraid of something F familial loss a straying loved one anonymity can't pronounce that word right. Spiders. And by subjecting each victim to the deepest fear to replay their most dreaded moment over and over again until their psyche shattered and their minds became malleable putty in my eager fingers, I could control them. I could control everyone. Everyone. Once the simulation was complete, all I needed to do was start hooking up victims. Throw a party, find a test subject. Let's try that one. Ah, and who better to test the simulation upon than my right hand man? Zen J was not eager to partake in the simulation, but after a brief, though intensely painful discussion, he saw the benefits of the architect being the first to walk into his own building. For hours, I heard Zen J's screams echo throughout the ship, like the mellifluous song of a child in mourning and I knew that then I and I knew then that the simulation was my raison d'etre it would set the standard for forward thinking empires throughout the universe and if any should ever match its brilliance I will crush them and claim their design for my own sounds like Rome after ex after extracting after extracting Zinjai from his personal nightmare, he gave his most wholehearted approval. When asked what his version of hell was, he said, A life without me. A life with only me. A life spent cleaning the, the laboratories of the Zen mothership. Probably that one because he's gay. To be honest, Zinjai didn't tell me what his deepest fear was, and I didn't press the matter, for I had other things to do. With the simulation as my crown jewel, I took at universal conquering with renewed zeal. I found a pleasure in forced subjugation of sentient life forms I never thought I'd have again. <sighs> Gonna yawn. I can feel it. <sighs> my enemies didn't simply fall by my sword. Their wills were snapped like the bones of a mouthy subordinate. I no longer had only the echoes of their dying words to remember them by. I had a whole world of twisted imagery, imagery and deep-rooted doubts and phobias. Oh, joy! Oh, cascading bliss! I spat a little. And I could visit them whenever I wanted. I had complete control. I held their brittle consciousness in my hand and could play with them like flickering, like flicking seeds into the wind. 
The simulation was not perfect. Nothing is. Even the masterwork Venus de Milo probably pronounced wrong, is short a couple appendages. But it was mine. And it was beautiful. For those who tested my patience by attempting escape, I had protocols in place. When needed, I intervened personally. Though it was rarely necessary, many of the subjects thought they were exceptions to the simulation's rule, but I put everyone every one of it's just but I put every one of them summarily back into place. I, I feel like I was I felt like I was reading that well and it just fell apart there at the end because of everyone. That's right, everyone. So, so it was so it was there needs to be a fucking comma there. So it was I went about collecting the exemplary specimens from cultures throughout the entirety of the known world. With one exception. A certain destination whose exploitation I wish to savor. A place whose artistic contributions had first set me upon my path. There was someone there I especially wished to meet. And with the time bending capability of the mothership, I could. But also I knew any planet capable of literary work of that caliber must also breed warriors unlike any other. I was excited, reader. Every part of my essence shivered with anticipation. With the mind of the Zen Empire behind me, I set out toward the far corner of the universe, toward a new galaxy to conquer a planet I had only enjoyed through its culture. Earth. Live in. Well, alrighty then. Sorry, I only had the first of Asha. Well, I definitely have all of those, but oh well. <laughs> He's my favorite today. I feel like Kenzie would be. Hey, Kenzie, you want to fuck? <laughs> this is really funny. Ah, oh. but I think I'm it with this game. I, I don't think I'm gonna play anymore. I uh, like the with the DLCs and stuff. I don't think I'm gonna play any of them. Dude, sick landing, bitch. Fuck. What? Wait, have we gone through this door? I'm not sure if I've gone through that specific door. That was weird. Alrighty then. That's the. Oh yeah, that's the bridge. Alrighty. So that's about it. I guess all I'm doing now. So at least we're we're inside the ship now. Keith is still touching shit. Yep. Well, that was fun. Had some nice times with handsome Squidward here. So handsome, so chiseled. Yeah. So that's it. And I'll get towards getting part twenty-five working. Probably had to mute like everything, so that's going to be annoying. It's going to be in there, copy of, so that's fun. But oh well, I don't care. I do care, but not enough. So, with that, 
to anybody watching now and everybody watching in the future. Take care now and bye bye then. Oh, the next stream is probably going to be Uncharted. Probably. Uncharted 2. Um, what is that? Um, Among Thieves. Yeah.